if you can remember back to being eight years old, being in third grade, and waiting for your turn to read for the whole class. I'm dyslexic, so the sort of hip heart string with me. I would just sit there and not read. I knew I couldn't read. I wasn't going to show the whole world I couldn't read. So I said, no, ah, that's what we need to do. Most of the, and I chose third grade, I read a lot of reports. It seems like the people out of California have nothing to do but write papers. And I read a good, good many of them. They found out that second graders did just as well with stuffed animals. Third graders, it made a big difference. The students that come to read to us were called reluctant readers. Most of them know how to read. They just lack confidence in themselves. And they come to us, and it's, the dog's not gonna laugh at them. The dog's not gonna make fun of them. And when they go back to the classroom, it's not you go to the special reading teacher. It's you get to read to the dogs. Cool. So they're instant rock stars. They only read 10 minutes a week. But, no. Pad. Pad. There we go. You guys say. And they, uh, the school they taught at is where I go back to. <laughs> That's the look of, I don't want to, but I'm going to do it. Anyway. <laughs> Gus is five, Boomer's 11. Uh, Boomer's a rescue dog out of Atlanta, adoptable in Atlanta. Gus was a Auburn University vet student. Woo! More Eagle. Now I've got to stop and think where I was. <laughs> we, the students can read. They come. The dogs take away all the worries. At Mount Hill, they have a rule: whenever the students leave the classroom, they got to be in care. So I get two readers at a time. The very first day we meet, I lay down the rules, and one of the things they get to do, do I read in front of my reading partner, or do I just read to the dog? And I give them time to make up their mind. And about third group, it was all, we want to read in front of my reading partner. And that's my goal by the end of the year. What it was, they said, Mr. Trump, we get to pet the dog for 10 minutes if we stay in the room. So they are thinking. The program works. I have one reader down. Now. And she told me that, Mr. Froker, I read the book. I'm going to read the boomer two or three times so I won't make a mistake. She was just giving the practice that she needed. I always feel guilty because I've got the kids for just 10 minutes a week. The teacher who is doing all the work and all the heavy lifting isn't there for the light bulb moment. And I get to share that light bulb moment many, many times. And it makes me feel good that the kids are overcome. And if this is overcome in third grade, it becomes a problem in fourth grade. And then it just expands and expands and expands. So, and being prior military, I try to kick holes in my program before I get some big old guy that his daughter's coming 
with the question of, come on, a dog is the best you can do for my child's reading problem. And if I was a dad, I'd be asking the exact same question. And so I read and read and read, and came up with Yale and Harvard and their medical library and in their legal libraries. They all have therapy dogs that can be checked out. Big time users, or first time freshmen, midterms, and finals. The dogs reduce the stress. So it works, and if it works for Harvard and Yale, it'll work for New Mountain Hill. Yes? <laughs> That's one of the things. If you have a dog at home and you want to think about going into therapy dogs, the local therapy dog organization is Pet Pals in Columbus. They have a program that will train you, train your dog, and evaluate. And then once you get certified, you can either go into a chapter where there are fellow dog owners that will sort of take you through the program. I chose to be a lone wolf because when I say something, I know it's going to happen because I'm going to be the one doing it. Anytime you get more than one person, it's hard to make that happen. So I just chose to be, and I was going to serve the school. The most asked question at school is, why don't you come more? We do Gus is Tuesday stock, Boomer is Thursday stock. They're only supposed to go for one hour a week because there's a lot of stress involved. And they can go into, if a dog doesn't want to do something, it goes into what's called refusal. It will refuse to get in the car. It will refuse to do whatever you do, ask them to do. I've never seen this. When I was training the dogs, I still had a friend in third grade that was teaching, and she asked, I was up at the school using their wheelchair to introduce the dogs to them. And after two little strolls over there, did they look at, hey, it's just a chair on wheels. It's no big deal. So I put it back in the car and went to visit my friend, and it so happens, she's in third grade, that her class had just read a book on therapy dogs. Would I bring the dogs in on Friday? I did. The kids were great, the dogs were great. There are 13 tests you take, and the evaluation to be certified as a therapy dog and a therapy dog handle. No. Yeah. <laughs> The 13th test is being around kids. So I said, okay, we can take care of this one by the way. Gus? <laughs> All the way. Oh. And so after Friday, we, she asked me, can you bring your dogs every Friday? And I'm not one to just, I wasn't going to come and entertain. So what I did, I broke the test down into two, two tests every Friday. The students got to be the evaluators. They got to be the teacher, which they thought was cool. They got to good to go or needs crane. And they were pretty tough. But I found with Boomer, Boomer's the rescue dog, he feels that anybody holds his leash, he has to go home with him. <laughs> About the third visit, he just sat down and said, oh, I'm not going in there. Then being the dog handler, I had to figure out what the problem was. Then I figured it out. It was the kids holding the leash, because that was a place of honor in the class. We rotated all the way around. But we found out there were three students that he would call her. So they got to hold the, the leash. 
Hey. 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 And the dogs did break. We went down. They got evaluated individually. Then a month later, no. <laughs> and they got evaluated as a pair so that we can go places now. now. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been working at Mount Hill. Oh, one thing I like about Mount Hill, when I taught, it always bothered me to take a student that is a poor reader out of math class to help them. All of a sudden, they've got a kid that can't add and can't read. That's not a good combination. Mount Hill has what's called flex time. It's the teacher's prerogative to do whatever they want during that one hour. So when the kids come to read to the dogs, they aren't missing any of their core studies. It's really a good program. I started, I thought, well, if I help one student, I see 10 every year. If I help one student, I'll feel successful. Every one of our students, except for two, have gotten the years gained in their reading. They gained confidence where they could read out loud in the class. And it gets so, so easy. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I've done a great job about training two rescue dogs, fail on my <laughs> You stay there. <laughs> uh, Therapy Dogs International, it's a good program, a lot of common sense. They just, I just got a email, okay, <laughs> that I have to stop going to the school because, because of the flu. No. And then we'll pick that up. Uh, normally, we go Tuesdays and Thursdays to New Mountain Hill. Wednesdays, we go to Covered Woods, which is a senior living. And we just sit out in the lobby, which is right outside of their dining hall. And everybody that wants to pet a dog can. It's very rewarding. It does take commitment. These people uh, look forward to seeing you come every week. I was walking out of down the hall, out the front door, and a little bitty girl said, Is that Cousin Boomer? I said, Yes. Are you Boomer's dad? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I'm, I'm very proud to, to wear that title. I also wear all the stuff has to be worn so they'll be covered by insurance, everything they have on them. I got jealous of the yellow tags, so I made one. There it says, I'm a therapy dog. Mine says, I'm a therapy dog driver. <laughs> Without me, they would be home sitting on the couch. Take on that. Thank you for supporting Humane Society. enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and most importantly please subscribe to my youtube channel thank you so much for watching <laughs>